Remember the north? We had to melt snow for water. It was so cold we had to double up under the same blanket. Not something I want to do Thanks again. For getting us out of there in one Well, good evening, everyone. I hope we're all doing good. I got a glass of wine here as I record today. Uh, hopefully, we'll have some fun. Uh, yeah, lots of interesting things going on. If you missed the previous episode, we went on a massive journey far away from Ascalon across the Shiver Peaks. Um, and we're doing it in the pursuit of learning about uh, a necromancer's amulet that seems to be drawing undead to it and is somehow tied up with an ex-member of our warband. We're currently with the Order of Whispers looking to find out what the inquest found out about said amulet and it's brought us to a dredge mine. If this Koru Khan were less chatty, I'd want him around permanent. And it's all a little bit creepy right now, and we're going to be going inside the mountain. Bit scary. I've set some stuff up here. If you check it out, we've got all the correct weapons that we care about down here in the invisible bag. Um, and the rest of our inventory is nice and clear. I wanted to show you something as well that I haven't really looked at very much. And it's this here, these bags of loot. We've been getting these as rewards for all of our quests. Uh, so the game originally, in instances like this, when you killed mobs, they'd just drop loot on the floor that you'd pick up. But uh, essentially, it was vaguely exploitable by the player base. So to stop, the, um, to stop any kind of weird gaming of the system, the devs instead at one point did a patch where they stopped all of the regular loot you'd get, and instead you'd get it in the form of bags later. So when we open a bag of loot, it rolls a random, random like number and we'll get something out of it. And the loot we get out of this will always be around the same level we are. So we're level 31 right now and I just got level 29 dagger. As a warrior, a dagger is one of the only weapons in the game we cannot equip. But it's around a good level for us. So we can open another one and here we get a torch. We won't be able to equip a torch until way later in endgame, but it's level appropriate. This time we got some armor, and it's pretty good armor. In fact, if you look, that's got 82 defense on it, while our current chest piece only has 24. So, as I continue playing, I'm going to start opening these, and what it means is we're always going to have good gear. Look, we get these great uh, gauntlets here as well. We get better boots here, um, and so on and so forth, right? And you get extra stuff, unidentifiable objects, gears, all of that good stuff, right? And then what you don't care about, you can just salvage down. Voila, like so and you can deposit it. So it's a big part of how we get extra stuff in the game and we can sell things to old vendors and whatnot uh, that I thought you guys should understand. And uh, yeah, it only takes two seconds to show off. So we just equipped some nice new stuff. I wanna make sure it's skinned properly. So give me one second. So we look something like that. And yeah, so we're uh, we're a bit stronger now, which is good. And we got the elite skill to play with. So what's going on guys? Clawspur. Fear is as much a weapon as your blood. Yeah, you've said that many, many times, my friend. He says, haven't killed many Dredge before, or Asura. Yeah, we haven't. We haven't seen any of them. If we're sneaky, we might not have to, and I know you like sneaky, Clawspur. So, yeah, he feels a bit out of his depth. Certainly so do I, my friend, so don't worry too much about that. Korokan, what's going on, man? The Inquest did their crystal research in that Dredge mine. They're down there now, sterilizing the site to remove any trace they were ever here. The inquest got where it is by stealing others' research and murdering the competition. Ready to give them a taste of their own medicine? I'm ready for anything that will settle this amulet business and lead me to hell. Nobody messes with my warband. Not even after they're dead. Your fallen comrade is already a part of this case. So solving it will tell us what happened to him, shall we? Hmm, okay. We're very loyal. Even after death, we we get mad at people for messing with them. All right, I mean, that's fine. So yeah, these are inquest people sound like a nasty bunch. I'm getting a little bit nervous as the series continues now, guys, as well, because very soon... I'll need to scout all of this. We're going to have a real challenge coming up. You know all this stuff I've been teaching you about what our class can do, the weapons we can use, the utility skills, the things we've been buying? We're going to get really put to the test soon because a dungeon is coming. And uh, that's going to be a bit of a challenge as far as I can tell. I'm going into it a bit fearfully. Uh, so yeah, enjoy, enjoy these instances while we can because we're rapidly hurtling into a big moment now. Anyway, so Inquest ex Extinguisher. You notice he's just an Asura. They're all a lot smaller than us. So they don't really threaten us physically. It's if they've got some crazy gadgets that we need to be worried. Uh, that guy, for example, has some kind of a frost gun. Uh, but yeah, so as long as we drop our banner. Kill 
that company. Pulverize them. So they, they, they've got a caravan. It's fleeing. Inquisitor Dab over there. It says catch the inquest before they escape the tunnel. I think we've got to chase after him, guys. I think we've got to go. All right, let's do it with the bulls, bulls rush. Look at this. they got like a little supply thing moving along. they got these big golems that they've built. These guys threaten us a little bit more. Will you stomp to keep them away? Use our great sword to get over and try and break the supply cart as it floats away. Get out of there. I guess this is a good time to use our elite. So here we go. The Mistfire Wolf. We summon, and again, as I mentioned in the previous video, that wolf is a bonus we get. There you go, we've stopped the caravan and he just cried fools. This is a bonus we got for having a special edition of the game all those years ago. It's not very strong, but it's kind of a fun ability, right? So there he is, he's fighting along. We're going to break the supply cart, just because I feel like we should. There we go, nice. And the research notes are in there. Let's uh, deal with Dab here as well. So use our quickness, Wells. Oh, come on. You guys can't tell me that double axe isn't great. Oh, I love double axe. And then we could just immediately move over, knock him down into 100 blades. So good. There'll be other styles of warrior gameplay we get to later, where we can start using condition damage, and we start doing lots of burns and bleeds and things. Um, but not for a little while. I want to play uh, sort of some of these powery ideas first. So there you go. Pretty good. Research notes. Simple. I found something. Are these the research results we were after? Let me see. Yes, you found them. There's quite a bit of useful information here. And a few inquest secrets that my blacksmithing friends can put to good use. What else do they say? Not here. I'll fill you in back at the Citadel. With these results and the help of the other orders, we should be able to wrap this up. I like how he's just, like, not going to tell us anything. And he's so, like, sneaky, sneaky about the way he speaks. And our character just doesn't care. He's like, yeah, whatever, your blacksmithing friends. Just tell me what 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 else is there. <laughs> it's kind of brilliant. Um, Before we go back to the Citadel, once again, just like last time, by the way, guys, I'm actually more interested in staying out here and getting a nearby waypoint. Because, as you might be able to guess... More to explore. Yes, once again, we're moving across the frozen sweeps here. I love this area. Um, once again, and it's night as well. There's nothing worse than the shiver peaks at night. Freezing cold, brutally... It's actually been really good as I've been playing this series with you all, because what's been happening is I've been playing during the in-game daytime, and then editing during the in-game nighttime, just in time to get back to playing as the sun rises. So you haven't seen too much of the nighttime in any of these episodes so far. I don't know whether it will line up so perfectly in future days. Uh, but yeah, we'll see. So it looks like there's a waypoint off over in the distance there. Let's go grab that. And yeah, there's this nice little Norn constructed outpost area. Quite far away from uh, the rest of Norn society, to be honest. But that's fairly normal for them, right? They're nomadic. They A lot of them live on their own out in the wilderness. Hunter-gatherers. Who's this guy? Custodian Wallum. Uh, Podagus Steading, which is where we are, was little more than a hot spring when I first saw it. It grew into a great lodge as more hunters came and became a strong steading as they settled down. I'm proud to be its custodian. Oh, okay. And so it looks like the Asura have set up a little waypoint here. These waypoints, by the way, they are more than just a game mechanic. They do actually exist in the lore, in the world. There are These are Asuran devices that have been created and planted in special areas of high magic. We'll learn more about that as the story progresses um, much later on down the road. But yeah, so it's a pretty nice area. And uh, getting that waypoint's quite nice for us. In fact, there's another one really close by as well. Let's go grab that. That'll be pretty nice for us for whatever future adventures we need to do in this area of the world before we uh, nip back to the Black Citadel. But goddamn, I do love these axes. Actually, did we skin this? I think we did. I think the Adamant Guard axes don't look that good, but whatever. All right, there we go. So Scrad and Waypoint. And you'll notice there's another portal there. That's going to take us for the first time. So this map is level 15 to 25, a bit like Kessex Hills from all that time ago. Well, this portal takes us to a higher level map than we've ever seen before, where the game, once again, gets more complicated, more interesting, more dangerous. But for now, let's go back to the Black Citadel, where it's safe and full of tanks. And happiness. <laughs> it's not worth the looks like rain. Smell like, like hunting deer in the morning. Sun. Man, I love coming back here. They always have something different and interesting. All the random NPCs around, they're all talking about different stuff. It's always good. 
So what's actually around in the other area of here? I believe there's some stuff we can interact with, right? There's a bandit chest that we unlocked. Here's some char couches and things. I like these. They actually look extremely uncomfortable. But then maybe they're not so uncomfortable to uh, us as char. There's a sleeping char. I've shown you guys barely any of the emotes, right? So yeah, if we sleep, we like curl up like a little kitty cat in a ball. And people really like that about those. I, I, I was pretty sure there's like a vase or something we could interact with here, but maybe not. So there's a little bit of a bug, by the way, here. Uh, this is a character that will uh, have a drinking game with us. Maybe we'll look at later. There is a... Um there's a bit of a bug at the start of this where all of the NPCs start saying the same audio that they said uh, at the start of the last instance. It's a bit of a shame that it's still there, but hey, there you go. So anyway, uh, yeah, Relock, we uh, have news. Good news. Eager to hear your report, Centurion. We're seeing an increase in undead attacks all over the region. Safe to say, Rissa's amulets are responsible. We've learned that they're connected to the Orion Dragon. They turn their owners into undead, and draw other undead to them. The Vigil has one of the amulets stashed in our HQ. Are you saying that my people are in danger? You militant types ought to be used to that by now. With so many innocents at stake, the Vigil can defend itself. The Priory is working on a way to detect the amulets. We'll use our device to stop the next outbreak before it starts. And if the Vigil falls, who will defend all those innocents it already protects? And while you're working that out, I'll withdraw to confer with my superiors. You'll have a tough choice ahead of you, Centurion. What's it going to be? So remember how we became a Centurion? And they said difficult choices would be ahead? Every single story step now has given us another choice we have to deal with. I don't think this is particularly difficult, though. I think it's quite obvious that the people who need our help more than anyone else are the Vigil. We can't afford to let the Vigil fall. Um, so yeah, they kind of skipped past something there as well. We found the inquest research, but didn't find out the contents of it. And then, what, now we just know what it was? So apparently, it is connected to the Elder Dragon of Death. And they just called it the Orion Dragon. So interesting little thing for you guys. Humans live here in a human kingdom, which we saw before. Humans used to live here, but the char kicked them out. Humans also used to live here in the ruins of Or, way off in the south. You'll notice that all the numbers here, these are all super high level maps. Level 80, level 75, level 80. This is the end of the core game. And it's because this kingdom was destroyed, sunk below the sea... And then risen back above the waves by an elder dragon. There is an elder dragon that roosts here. Its name is Zaitan. And it is the elder dragon of death. That's why when we're talking about this amulet of death a second ago. They just called it the Orion dragon. So that's kind of where all paths eventually will lead. But for now, if the Vigil, an order of militant, you know, Char and other races alike, that dedicated to fighting these dragons, if they're threatened, then this is a serious problem. If they've got an amulet and it's drawn tons of undead there, we should sort that out. So they threaten the Vigil headquarters itself. Come defend it with me, he says, and I promise the Vigil will set out in force to collect the Necromancer's amulets and help you find your missing warband member. Done. I help defend your comrades, you help find mine. I knew I could count on you, soldier. See you at Gendaran Fields, where we'll put those undead, undead down for good. And so the quest is over. We get another cool uh, rewards. Pretty good helmet here. We get a strong helmet, a mending helmet, or a penetrating helmet. Let's get the strong one. This looks really cool. Finished with that. What skin is this like? Maybe we'll just wear this. This looks like a new sort of helmet style. Oh my god, this looks like ridiculous. Look at that. How can we even see through that? How can we even see like these tiny little slits? What? That's so crazy. We will wear it though. For a long time to discuss whether to accept the truce or not. Oh, what's this about the truce? Interesting. These guys are talking over here as well. Oh, they're talking about visiting Holbrack. That's where the Norn are from in the, in the mountains nearby. Anyway, okay, so there you go. No time to dilly dally. Let's go straight back to that waypoint we unlocked a second ago. Scradden waypoint. And it should be time to defend the vigil. So, this portal. They said that it was in Gandaran Fields. This is Gandaran Fields through here. Gandaran Fields is technically what one could consider Kryta. This is a really interesting map. Basically, we are getting closer and closer to where our human, Casey, is hanging out right now. The timelines are starting to match up here. So we get another... Um, another uh, we're on the Lion Road, obviously, right? So we get another haven here, and we get people who talk to us about what's going on. We're still in the mountains right now. 
You may want to test your metal at Volum's Arena before you travel any further. He takes challengers. You may even get to fight something you've never seen before. Go ahead. Give the locals something to cheer about. I mean, if we had, if this was a more of a leisurely trip, if we as a player weren't interested in the main story, if we were just exploring Tyria, which by the way is totally valuable and viable and a lot of people end up doing, uh, maybe that would be really good advice to listen to. But can you see this giant structure out in the mountains over here? This is actually the border of the mountains and the other side of the range. So last episode, you saw us walk up from Ascalon into the mountains. This is the other side now. And that large fortress, that's the vigil headquarters. This is a giant airship overlooking it. Look at how cool that airship is as well, by the way. This is the first airship we've seen. There's a lot of airships in this story. We won't be able to get up to that. But uh, there will be airships we get to ride around on and do all kinds of stuff later. So the arenas are over there with the Norn. Obviously, the Norn just love challenges and dueling one another. There was a lot of stuff to do with tournaments and the Norn in the original game. But we're going to have to pass on that and move through this. Um, another bat cave. What's with all the bat caves we go through here? By the way, some ore here. You'll notice that this is silver ore. Before, we were only looking at bronze. But the game is uh, giving us more ore now. So we get even an amethyst nugget from that. These bats are really going to hurt us, so we're going to have to kill them here. Adrenaline rising. Get a ton of adrenaline. Let's swap. We'll eviscerate first with quickness. No, don't run away. Okay, good. We can blow these bats up. Let's throw an axe over at this one. Oh, we missed. We missed the axe. We didn't aim properly, and it, it missed. All right, there we go. Good. Let's take our banner and keep going. The vigil needs our help. You see that this bridge up here? This gets this us here. Is interesting. So who are you? Bought the Bloodless. Can you fight? You can be a pirate. So we're going to start meeting pirates as well, because not only are we reaching Kryta, not only are we reaching where the Vigil are stationed, but we're also getting quite close to Lion's Arch, which is a free haven for all races, but is built by pirates. We've not really interacted with pirates just much, but it's going to become a thing very soon. Uh, I will take one quick detour just down here in front. Look at how cool this is. Honestly, look at how cool their headquarters is. They're, I mean, there's three orders, right? They all have a base of operations. I love this base of operations. I think it looks so good. Uh, but yeah, so check it out. Warmaster Yulio. So Warmaster is a rank in the Vigil. I've been tracking your legend, Tyrix. Wow. Don't look so surprised. And don't expect me to tell you how long I've been following your progress. All you need to know is that I was there when you fought the dead Duke, Baradin. What? You've come a long way since then, they say. What do you want from me? It's time for you to fight me. Can't you feel it in the wind? You're ripe for it, and I'm ready to share my knowledge with you. The spirits have brought us both here, and I've waited long for this day. Are you ready? This is actually quite a difficult fight. So she's level 29. We're level 31. We don't have our banner. It just disappeared. Uh, but let's see what we've got. We will use our Misfire Wolf again. Ready? She's going to attack us. And she has dual-wielding axes as well. That's brilliant. So let's use our combo. She's putting a lot of bleed on us. She might kill us, guys. This is really bad. So our heal skill actually cleanses conditions. So we had a lot of bleed on us there, but we managed to cleanse them, which is good. I think I'm going to be really scared to go near her unless I have, like, CCs and things. We'll let the wolf fight her for a second. The wolf's actually doing really well. Let's stomp to knock her into the woods and kill her there. There we go. Good. Now get out there and do some good in the world. Build your legend. Thank you. You can build yours too. You were a formidable opponent. She's actually genuinely a scary opponent. Look at this sawmill here. Wow. All right, so we've got to get up there, guys. There's an amulet in that building somewhere, and the undead could be about to attack, if not have already attacked at any moment. So let's move on up. And somewhere down to the south, you know, it's starting to get a bit green again. It's the Crichton Heartland again. And Crichton Farmland and so forth. So there you go. We've actually seen the journey across the, the Shiver Peaks in these past two videos. So... Continue our story, defending the keep. Hell yes. Welcome to the Vigil headquarters. Hey, Clawspur. I know a few Vigil soldiers. Not up to our standard, but good fighters. Fear is as much a weapon as your blade. He doesn't think that they're as good fighters as the High Legions and the Char. Interesting. I suppose the Vigil contains more than just... I mean, the Char are all warmongers, right? They're incredible in battle and strategy. And they're, like, all geared around it. The Vigil contains so many races. Perhaps it's fair to say they're weaker? I don't know. It's a curious comparison to make, right? Anyway, not bad for amateurs, he says. And we say, well, after this, I'm counting the Vigil as real soldiers. Interesting. So one thing to know about the Vigil... The worst part is the waiting before the attack. You scared yet, rookie? Should I be? I'm more anxious than scared. This situation's very new to me. Ha! 
No, there's nothing to be scared of, Rosebud. Not with me watching your back. I think you meant that to sound reassuring. Why am I not reassured? See, look, these guys aren't Char. This is a human. A filthy human. And over here, we have, uh, this is a Silvari. This is a plant. Um, a sentient plant race, the Silvari, who we'll learn much about. Um, but yeah, so they're preparing for the attack. The thing about the Vigil guys is they are strong. They are powerful. Lots of people have rallied to their cause. And they are a strong military force in dealing with the Elder Dragons. But they're new. They haven't existed on Tyria for very long. They're not as wise or as old or well refined as many of the others. And some don't respect them for that. Look, they've got cannons pointed at the entrance here though. They're waiting for the undead. And Balthazar uh, Thank you, I guess, I suppose. I mean, I'm a char. You probably shouldn't say that to a char, but there you have it. Um, more cannons. More of these guys. Here's the headquarters. So we could go up there, but the quest takes us along. So, if you've never fought in a real battle alongside one of us, you're in for a treat. I haven't fought beside Char, but I did step on a cat's tail once. Is that what it's like? Ooh. <laughs> Funny. No, I'm literally poetry in motion. If poetry could stab you with a sword. By the spirits. If the undead don't attack soon, your tail is so stepped on. So it's interesting that the Char who are a member of the Vigil and the other orders, the Char we see are far away from Ascalon at the moment. They can technically be a part of the High Legions. They could have been ordered by their Legionnaires, their Centurions, their, their Tribunes, their whatever, to go and join the Orders and work with them. But it's not really a common thing. So the game might give us an impression as we move forward now that tons of Char aren't sort of working for the High Legions in a more traditional sense. But we will find a lot of them out here. We will find them in the Vigil. We will find them in the Order of Whispers. We will find them in the Derman Priory and beyond. And I mean, particularly as a playable race. Right, so who's this? Crusader Gan. It's good to see you. So this is where you come from, is it? I always did like you. This place looks ready for war, Gan. I'm impressed. After all this preparation and building up of our defenses, I'll be disappointed if we're not attacked. The plan is simple. The ramp you just came up is the only way in. We've set up barricades to slow down and thin out attackers. You can also use those cannons to welcome our undead visitors. If they get through all that, we fall back to the keep. That means you too, Centurion. Our house, our rules. We want live soldiers, not dead heroes. If the vigil falls back, you fall back. Clear. Clear. Is there anything I should do in the mean? Front. We'll hold them there as long as we can. Uh-oh, it looks like it's happening. They're coming. Is there anything we should do in the meantime? Well, I guess fight, right? Here we go. Let's get on out there. Uh, and yeah, so we will we will adhere to him. We could keep our war band, you know, which basically means claws burr for now, uh, here and fighting with us. But um, you know, we we will not we will not suicide here. We need artillery support. Get on the cannon. So cannons, let's do it. We get three abilities: fire, fire grape shot, or ice shot. So ice shot drops this field that slows them down. Grape shot bleeds the hell out of them. And regular shot does knock back and a lot of damage, it seems. So we can keep firing this cannon at them. Finally, we get to use a cannon. There was, oh no, there were mortars in that previous mission, weren't they? We get really good range on this, by the way. You can use it all the way back there. So as long as we use the skill three uh, as soon as we can, as frequently as we can, to keep that chill field down there, this means that they can't advance too quickly and our allies can get in there and do some damage. So that's good. This looks so pretty good so far. I mean, it is just undead drawn to an amulet. This isn't like some massive coordinated attack from the Elder Dragon himself. It's mostly just, you know, the enchantment that's dragging them along. Here, this is a plague carrier. We want to be really careful of those. They're like bombers. They're like exploding creatures. You don't want them anywhere near you. There's a lot of different varieties of Risen. And the more the story goes on, the more we'll learn about new ones. So far, they're just fairly weak, low-level ones. Brutes, stuff like that. Oh, my God. Look at that wave back there. That's it. Uh, yeah, I think I agree with that. Let's drop the chill fields. They're backing off. This is more than we can handle. Here, dig in. We'll hold them here. All right, we're leaving. I'm leaving. I'm running. Are you guys okay? So here's a guy. It's a Silvari. You'll notice he's a champion. His name is Loranthir of the Wild. Hmm. Remember that name, guys. He may or may not become a fairly important character. All right, so we'll kill him. We just got to generally defend the keep now, so... We don't get the luxury of the cannon, I don't think. Is there anything else we can use to fire in? 
I don't think so. We'll let them run forwards. We got all of those defenses. I'd rather attack early to save my friends if I can. What we should do, guys, is we should start looking at chefing or buying from the trading post uh, food that we can eat. Um, and using sharpening and st stones and stuff that will buff us. Check it out. We got a non ally who just became a bear. Let's drop a banner down so that the bear gets extra uh, buffs. Oh my god, they're all getting wrecked. Ah, oh, guys. Guys, this is not good. All right, I'm peeling. I'm bailing out. This is not good. Let's run away just for a second. We're going to break combat. How about we try out one of our new elite skills, guys? This seems like a good moment to do it. We just need to break combat, though, by running away. Here we go. So, how about we try the Charzooka? Pull out a powerful Charzooka that shoots rockets. So check it out. We equip this amazing massive weapon. We get five new abilities with all these ridiculous, incredibly powerful rockets that come flying out. We can launch ourselves away, but we only get the Charzooka for a little while. So we can do as much damage as possible with it. Oh my god, there's so many risen. Okay, the Charzooka's gone now. Oh, there's so many. Well, we can get some good damage from range with the Charzooka there. You might have been a little bit underwhelmed with the Charzooka in combat there. Unfortunately for us, the devs decided at some point that they didn't really want the racial skills to be that strong. So, the idea of having an elite racial skill kind of just falls down flat immediately. So, the Charzooka is not that great. It's funny because way before the game came out, I actually have a story where... I, if you look online, there's an old forum called Guild Wars 2 Guru. And if you look at my account on there, you'll see me whining about this. I said, look, this doesn't logically work. How can you have racial skills that are weak, but also have racial skills that are elite skills? It doesn't work. And it was never really addressed. It was a philosophically bad idea. And unfortunately, even to this day, the Charzooka is not as strong as maybe it could have been. This is really tricky, right? God, we got to actually be very careful here and make sure we clear these guys out. Got to defend the keep. They're pushing us further and further back, right up to the door here now. It's okay, because we can use Arcing Slice to do tons of damage in a big area. Look at all these enemies. This is crazy. I'm running in. I'm bailing inside. We don't have axe or anything, so we've got to be really careful. God, look at all the poison that they do to us as well. Oh, the worst thing is, in real life, the sun just came out, and it's glaring so hard on my screen. Oh, we just cleaved them down. Oh, my lord. All right, let's get back inside. There'll be time to explore the interior of the keep later, I'm sure. Move forward. All right, there's a few left get all of our crazy mobility. We'll throw the axe from far away. There you go. Oh, um, if we were running um, the elite banner right now, we could resurrect all of our friends really quickly and easily and that would be great. It looks good. Is that the last of them? Oh my god, there's even more spawning. There we go. Wow. We, we hit 847. I think that's the single biggest hit we've seen in the game so far, guys. We're actually nearly get, starting to hit 1,000 damage. And that will go up a lot, by the way. <laughs> a lot, a lot, a lot. Still defending the keep. It seems pretty good. Let's res these guys. Garn, Garn, you're down. Get up, man. So once we start resing the others, they all start resing one another too. Step right up. More undeads. I don't know. Is it because we have a key NPC that is uh, defeated right now? Do we need to run back towards the entrance of the keep, maybe? Loranth is bailing back here. You're right, dude. Do you want to speak to us? Honor me. He says, on behalf of General Soulkeeper, welcome. I'm Loranthir. And if there's anything I can do for you, just let me know, I think is what he said. I'm paraphrasing heavily there. He got in combat, so he won't speak to us anymore because he's fighting. Some must fight so that all may be free. Ooh, that's an interesting way of viewing the world. All right, let's take these out here. The preliminaries are over. Here come the abomination. Oh, my God. That was just the preliminary attack? All right, so slay the undead abominations. So look at those huge creatures there. Yeah, we're dealing with real undead now. Be very cautious of these. So these enemies do uh, some pretty incredible stuff. They'll do a big charge attack that can, like, instantly kill us and charge through us and knock us away. But also, we'll summon the banner here. Let's get our Charzooka out and do some damage with it. This charge here, we got to avoid this. No, get away. All right, that didn't even hurt us that much. That's because we're heavy armor. That's good. Um, but they stack this thing here called Frenzy, okay? So Frenzy is really bad because it means they do more and more damage every time they hit us. So if you take too long killing them, they'll get like 25 Frenzy. And then when they do the charge, it's like utter death. So it's really bad. So we want to kill them nice and quick. Look, look, look. He's got 11 Frenzy now. Look at this damage. Oh my god. This is so bad. All right. We've got to dodge away. All right. Don't let him hit us that. 12 Frenzy with a charge. That would be really bad. He goes, he's facing away. Arcing slice. Oh, we missed it. He walked away. 100 blades. Oh, that's going to hit us really hard if we're not careful. 
So I used the skill three to evade there. Good. Oh, they just about died. My God. Scary stuff. Scorch me. What were those things? Zaitan. And we're going to keep seeing more. More undead that are more dangerous than usual. More often. They weren't playing around, were they? Is it just me, or are these amulets getting stronger? It's definitely getting worse. And if an amulet isn't even safe inside a vigil fortress, it's time to rethink our approach. Let's get back to Ritlock and the other orders. We need to stop these outbreaks before the landscape is hip deep in undead. Agreed. I need to deal with our casualties here, and then I'll meet you back at the Black Citadel. Woo! So we just about made it there. Oh my god, we just about made it. Yeah, this seems pretty bad. Gan says, nice work, Centurion. Now that the keep's safe, we can track down the Necromancer and your missing comrade. Agreed. Let's head back. So, will we finally find Hal? Are we going to meet Hal very soon? Where's Clawspur? Did he die? I think Clawspur died way back at the entrance there. It's all right. We'll go res him in a second, buddy. Here's Aranthir. What does he say? Consider me an ally. We appreciate your help here. I hope you give serious thought to joining us full time before we begin our final push against the Elder Dragons. Huh. What an interesting prospect. I'll keep that in mind. Right now, I'm due back at the Black Citadel. Okay. That seems pretty good to me. And let's do it all the way back to Ascalon here. For the price of 71 copper, almost a full silver now at this point, to travel these kinds of distances. And everybody's outside now, actually, it seems. Hey, guys, they're not even waiting for us in indoors. Oh, what are they talking about? It seems like they're having a bit of an argument there. So our entire warband's here. Check it out. Clawspur, Alexis, and Fion. Uh, what's the go How's it going, guys? Redlock, what's up, man? Is there news? The orders disagree on how to proceed, so I have a plan. You choose which one will help. In return, I've arranged for you to permanently join that order. You'll still be a centurion of the High Legions, but you'll also be a link between us and your chosen order. Your warband will continue doing Citadel business while you're gone. I understand. Hal's involvement made this personal, but the Orient Dragon is a global threat. We need strong, reliable allies against it. Okay, people. Time to decide. We have the means to find the Necromancer's Dragon Crystal. And to destroy it. All thanks to the Priory. We know what we're doing. So now let us destroy the crystal without interference. We work better that way. There's no way I'm leaving a vital search and destroy mission to a bunch of academics. Wait for vigil support before you make a move. Either way, the Order of Whispers will do what we always do. Let you draw their attention, then strike from the shadows. It's your call, Centurion. But remember that you're not just helping out. You're joining the Order you choose. Well, so, a lot to discuss here. First of all, you notice how quickly Ritlock is happy for us to uh, talk about fighting the Elder Dragons? Almost like he has an invested stake in fighting the Elder Dragons himself. He mentioned something similar before. So, uh, yeah, pretty big news, and the game had been hinting at it already a reasonable amount. Uh, yeah, the, Ritlock's just gonna send us away from the Black Citadel altogether. A bit like that char we saw out at the uh, Vigil Keep a moment ago. We, too, are gonna be sent by the High Legions... To, with this terrible headpiece. All right, let's just turn the headpiece off. We're going to be sent away to um, sort of uh, hang out with the orders and an order of our choice to keep tabs on them and hopefully figure out something to do with the Elder Dragons. Not just the Elder Dragons in general, but specifically the Elder Dragon of Death because of this issue here with the amulet. So that's already an awful lot to think about. But another thing that's quite curious is, you'll notice through all of our decisions here, we kind of ignored the Priory. At no point did I say, oh, let's go do the Priory. And these guys have actually been putting in legwork. Even though we haven't seen it, they've been putting in legwork and they figured some stuff out. They're talking about a crystal. They're saying here that they've discovered that these amulets are powered by crystal, uh, a crystal somewhere. And Necromancer Risa has this crystal. If we destroy it, then we rob the amulets of all their strength. And so uh, maybe we should regret a little bit not helping those guys out. But they've put in the legwork. They've done something well here. So we know our plan is just how do we follow the plan. So what does everyone say? First of all, we've got Kurik and the blacksmith. 
Oh, they don't actually say anything now. Target. I guess we know the stakes. So, we already hung out with him a little bit. I'm not sure I like him too much. We've hung out a lot with the Vigil, but it seems like the Dermon Priory seem to have made the boldest best moves here. Hmm, so who do we want to join? Who do we want to keep tabs on? We can only pick one. And this is probably the most important decision we will make in the entire core game. It's a huge decision, and it will affect a massive number of missions and things we come up against. You know how at the beginning of the game we had all those biography choices? This is kind of like an even more important one of those, but it happens in the middle of the game instead of the start. So, what does our warband think here? Let's speak to Fion. Watch yourself, cub. Fion here says, personally, I'd be happy if we stuck it with the Order of Whispers. Being sneaky and getting results is how I earned my name. Good advice, I'll let you know what I've decided. And by the way, if we hadn't picked Fion for our warband all that time ago, we would have the other person. We'd have Sour Doomsday with us, and Sour Doomsday would have a different recommendation. Uh, we got Alexis. Rely on strength, not false gods. Who we pinched and saved from the Flame Legion, uh, who was going to be demoted to Fry Cook. She says, I'd have no trouble joining the Vigil. Their commanding officer is female. Yeah, it's true. The leader of the Vigil is a female Char, nonetheless. Um, so, uh, after I helped him take down the dragons, the Flame Legion would be next. Interesting. Good advice, I'll consider it. I wonder if this is the developers hinting that one day if we move on from the Elder Dragon story, it will turn back into the Flame Legion or something. That'd be kind of funny. And lastly, Claw Spur, old buddy, old pal. What do you think? You've been here since the start, man. I overheard you're leaving us to join one of the Orders. No. I'm accepting a special assignment from the Tribune, and the Warband will need a leader while I'm gone. That's you, Legionnaire. Me? But I'm just a frontline life taker. I need someone I can trust. Someone effective. You've got some rough edges, but there's nobody else I'd want calling the shots. If anyone objects, send them to me. Or just crack their heads until they think different. You're in charge now. Act like it. I know you can handle this. I... Thanks, boss. You can count on me. Good luck in Lion's Arch. We'll be waiting for you when you get back. Oh my god, it's just sunk in, guys. It's just sunk in. We have to say goodbye to our order. We're going, like, far afield from Ascalon on this one. And I cannot... Uh, I mean, our, our player characters on the ball faster than we are. Definitely Clawspur is the one who deserves to lead the warband more than anyone else, right? He says, soon it will be time to choose, eh? In a word, yes. Look at that. See, he speaks so little, and then we speak very little back to him. Man, Clawspur, congratulations, dude. I, I genuinely did deserve it more than anyone else. He's been, like, on every single mission with us. Right. So who do we choose? Let's see what Korokun says. Know what cannot be known. Know what cannot be known. Ready to join the silent ranks of the Order of Whispers? Remember, this choice is permanent, so be certain of your commitment. Hmm, I need more time to consider. Ready to join the scholarly ranks of the Dermond Priory? Remember, it's permanent, no going back. Or are we ready to... Time to squat or get off the pot, soldier. Remember... If you can join the ranks of the Vigil, it's for life. This is one decision you can't take back. It's not actually for life. We will come back. Well, Ritlock certainly plans for us to come back to our warband. We will be able to operate outside of the Vigil if we choose to tail along with them for a while. But it is an important decision. So what does Ritlock think as well? He doesn't weigh in. So what do we want, guys? For our ferocious, militaristic char, I think that it's pretty obvious we should go Vigil. I think we're best suited to the Vigil. The leader of the Vigil is a Char who's left the High Legions altogether, okay? A Char named Almora Soulkeeper. We've got a lot to learn there, so let's do it. Oh, no, not the, not the Dermot Pry. Oh, my God. Imagine if I misclicked that. That would have been awful. So here we go. Time to squat off the pot. I'm in. I'll officially join the Vigil. I like you guys. The Vigil is the right choice, soldier. You'll be a strong asset to us. Your skills will make a real difference in the world. The Vigil understands what this is. War. The Dragon Threat needs to be confronted head-on, starting with Necromancer Rissa. By now, Hal is most likely one of her mindless minions. He deserves to rest in peace, and she deserves to die. What's our next move? Direct assault with overwhelming force. The Priory can destroy the Crystal, but we will clear the way for them to do so. If they falter, or their magic potion fails, we'll bash it until it shatters. Meet me at Lichcroft Mirror, and we'll put an end to this. And there you have it, guys. 
A big decision just made, so we get a new weapon. Uh, let's get a new greatsword. Because that looks like it does way more damage than our current one. We level up. What do we learn from the level up? Okay, so the game teaches us about a new type of consumable here. Utility consumables. So these are items that increase specific combat abilities. Alright? So it's like food, right? Uh, so we can get maintenance oils. We could get tuning crystals. Or we could get sharpening whetstones. I'm going to get a sharpening stone here, which we can use on our weapons, and it will give us extra power. So we can do that, and they even give us some unidentified dye as well there. So that's good. We get more uh, up... Actually, if you check this out, for our upcoming rewards soon, we're going to find rare equipment, which is going to be kind of nice. That's like, that's a level 39. That's still a bit away, actually. Um, but yeah, okay, so that, that's great. I hope everybody's happy with my decision. Now we settle this, he says. Damned right. I'm glad that the orders are working together for a change, but this still feels like the three different missions with three different objectives. But my goals are clear. I find how I destroy this crystal, and I punish this necromancer. What? These order folks are making progress, but they could learn a thing or two from the High Legions about coordinated action. Then it's up for us to show them how it's done, we say. Yeah, I actually agree with all of that. Garn doesn't say anything. Yala doesn't. Ritlock you doesn't. Alright. So, uh, what's really cool now is it's been a little while since we fought with our entire warband at our side. But this, guys, this next mission way out in Gendaran Fields. Look at this adventure we're going on here. Alright. This final mission will have our entire warband fighting with us. Where is a waypoint that we can go to? Did we get a single waypoint in the new map? My god, I think we got a bit of a walk ahead of us. Here's one, right? So we got a bit of a walk. We got to find this swamp where the necromancer is based from. And our whole warband is going to come with us for the climactic finale as we decide uh, to join an order for good. And we visit, at long last, the pirate haven of Lion's Arch. Where some pretty crazy stuff is going to happen for us, but not just us. Ritlock Brimstone 2 might just be about to embark on his own adventure. That will be happening next time, guys. Thanks very much for watching. Things are about to get really good as we move away from our domestic stories entirely. I hope to see you guys next time. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you shortly.